don't we uh, next transition to patients with uh, recurrent or metastatic head and neck cancer? And so um, how are you treating patients at UCSD? And are there any um, biomarkers or patient selection criteria that helps you determine um, how to best treat these patients right now? So recurrent metastatic cancer is a, a big problem. Um, we do not have treatment options as good as I wish we did for, for people. Right now, the main biomarker we're using to select treatment is PDL1. Simple test that can be done on any biopsy specimen, even a relatively small one, and it's graded on a level of zero to 100, with higher predicting for benefit from immunotherapy. So normally for my patients with relatively high levels of PDL1, I use immunotherapy by itself, mostly pembrolizumab. Whereas for people with lower levels of PDL1, I tend to combine immunotherapy with chemotherapy, specifically with drugs like carboplatin and paclitaxel. Um, and how, what's your practice at UNC? Yep, we're, we're twins on this one. So I, I do it the same way. And I, I agree if patients have a higher PDL1 expression or a combined positive score greater than 20, typically we're doing immunotherapy or pembrolizumab on its own or looking at clinical trials. But if they have the one to 19, and I, you know, I, this is something that I think about a lot. And there's a lot of controversy of how to best treat these patients. And when you talk to folks around the country, so much heterogeneity. And so I, I really think that this isn't, should be and needs to be an active area of investigation so we can really um, better help treat patients with the one to 19 CPS score. Um, yeah. And I think the other major, um, place that where we can improve therapies is after patients progress with two lines of therapy. And so outcomes, unfortunately, remain really poor. And, um, you know, there's a lot of efforts into studying this and new trials, but um, has there been anything that's really piqued your interest, either at ASCO or from elsewhere? Yeah, so there's, there's some interesting data finally coming out in targeted therapies for head and neck cancer. So as you mentioned, I'm a lung cancer doctor as well. And in lung cancer, oral targeted therapies have become a big part of our treatment. And for many of our patients, they can really help them live longer and better lives. Unfortunately for head and neck cancer, targeted therapies haven't really been such a big part of our treatment. Not for lack of effort, just they don't seem to work as well. Um, more recently, we have some data on a mutation called HRAS. Unfortunately, it's not super common. It's only in about five to 10% of people with head and neck cancer, but there is a drug in clinical trial called tipofarnib uh, that inhibits this protein and does seem to lead to responses. I think it's a pretty promising new drug. Uh, so hopefully there will be more trials like that coming out. We're doing more investigation right now to look for what targets can we hit in this cancer that so far has been, been pretty resistant to targeted therapy. 